Logan Paul is a deceptive fraud at best and an outright scammer at worst, with nearly every single one of his projects resulting in Logan Paul profiting at the direct expense of the fans who trust him. And yes, this even extends to the sports drink company meant to act as Logan's retirement plan. Because no, Logan isn't even above hurting the health of his viewers as long as it leads to profit. Though for most, this isn't a surprise, seeing as how Logan is one of the best examples of someone who famously sucks, right? I mean, he was behind arguably the biggest controversy in internet history. I think there's someone hanging right there. Has been a public nuisance on multiple occasions. Here we go. <laughs> has repeatedly exposed his child fans to graphic and disturbing content. No, I'm I, I'm so sorry about this, Logan. This was supposed to be fun vlog. And as I previously discussed, has a long-running history of being a terrible pet owner, with a shocking number of Logan's pets suffering preventable deaths, as well as tragedy for those lucky enough to survive. My dog got eaten by a coyote. Kong. Kong. Little Pomeranian. Little tiny Pomeranian. The pig was found abandoned in a field with tattered ears and a potentially life-threatening infection. She once belonged to Logan Paul. You guys know about the tragedy that was Maverick the Parrot? How my fucking Evil, evil Tibetan Mastiff Ginger the Giant ate him, and now his legacy is preserved in cloth. It's actually kind of sad. But none of that is what I want to talk about today, because you see, the last couple of years have been disastrous for Logan. Following Logan's infamous Japan incident where he used the body of a suicide victim as a prop in one of his vlogs, he has spent years on a very strong comeback campaign that was honestly working. This included his statements on the Black Lives Matter movement. It is not enough to be not racist. You have to be anti-racist. Yeah. And for those who do not think white privilege exists, you are fucking blind. You are delusional and you are part of the problem. Him beginning to hold his brother accountable for some of his more questionable antics. Jake told me he wanted to be a, a villain in movies and he just made the movie his life. <laughs> <laughs> he really, he, that's, that's so real, accurate. He's he, the real life villain. His underdog fighting career. The fact that I'm in here with one of the greatest boxers of all time proves that the odds can be beat. I'm the maverick, I go right when they go left. I'm the unorthodox one, I'm the independent one, and everyone has it in them. Him joining the WWE. My hand was raised and they handed me this shiny, heavy belt, the United States champion. And his shift from vlogging to podcasting. A shift that allowed Logan to showcase his real personality instead of having to fabricate an entertaining lifestyle as a savage. And this campaign was incredibly successful. I personally watched public perception of Logan shift from insufferable misfit to an all right guy guy who's learned from his mistakes, you know? So what happened? Well, CryptoZoo. See, on December 16th, 2022, YouTuber CoffeeZilla, best known for his financial investigation work, released a shocking expose on CryptoZoo, a project spearheaded by Logan that promised to turn the technology behind crypto and NFTs into an interactive game, one that is designed for the players to profit. Um, I'm excited to launch, uh, to launch my game. You keep using a, and you just did it again, you keep using a word there, game. It's a game. It's a fun, it's a really fun game that makes you money. Though in the end, no functional product matching this description was ever launched, and the millions of dollars that Logan collected from would-be players went entirely unaccounted for for over a year. And while it might seem weird for me to talk about this now, some major updates just happened that made this worth another look. And while diving into this, I stumbled across an ongoing pattern of Logan generating over a billion dollars in revenue through deceiving and misleading his fans. So let's start with what is both his most recent and serious scandal, CryptoZoo. Now, cryptocurrencies and NFTs have one major appeal to them, which is that they aren't regulated in the same way that stocks and other currencies are. And this is often presented as, well, a good thing, because one might argue that innovation can truly thrive with fewer obstacles. The problem is, we see this exact argument frequently used in several different markets, and almost every time, it ends up coming down to those at the top exploiting the more vulnerable. Because yes, a lack of regulation is more likely to lead to prosperity, but mainly for those at the top at the expense of everyone else. And while there there will always be Cinderella stories of an everyday Joe who does find prosperity, those tend to be outliers that are simply highlighted by those reaping the most benefit. And yes, this is also incredibly similar to the conversations around React content. However, off the top of my head, I can think of multiple examples in times where React content has genuinely helped smaller creators like blow up their channel. My channel, I'm the perfect example of it. And nothing demonstrates this better than, well, NFTs, which were presented to people as their ticket to the top. Every person, if you listen to this and remarkable pop culture, current state of society show, and you've not yet bought an NFT, 
you're doing a big disservice to yourself. But are now largely worthless. And while the weeds of this are so incredibly complex, there is one really easy example of how these scams can take place, which is a classic pump and dump, which often refers to getting a lot of people to buy a stock, crypto, or other similar product in order to increase their value. This drives up the cost to a new high, at which point the ones behind this push can silently sell all of their shares in order to make a profit before the buyers realize that their product is actually worthless. And this is one of the many reasons crypto and NFTs are so controversial. Due to the fewer regulations, it's harder for governing bodies to identify or act on these scams. So content creators are the perfect people to make a quick buck here, as their entire business model is to form a personal connection with as many people as possible and gain influence as a result. Take Aiden Ross, who quite literally bragged to and laughed at his audience for investing in a crypto he pushed to them. Chat, by the way, that MILF token I did a while back, I already told you guys, don't buy that shit. I got paid a bag to do that <laughs> Like, I don't give a f I hope none of you guys actually bought it. <laughs> and I Show Speed faced universal backlash for pushing a crypto project from known scammers without vetting them. Look, it's cool now. Relax, relax. Yo, no, 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 relax. I right, listen to the chat. You'll see no more f***ing scams. I know, I know, I know. I'm just trying to make it. You know what I'm doing, bro. So where does Logan Paul come into play? Well, in 2021, Logan announced that he was working on his own NFT project. In fact, he touted it as being above anything else that was being done in the space. I've been working on my own NFT project that uh, I believe is going to change the game because as of now, there's a model that a lot of people in the crypto space have identified. It's it's all just the same thing, just rewrapped into different skins and you hope there's enough hype and a community around to build um, value in your project, right? I think, there need, I think there needs to be a fresh take and this project that I have uh, is that fresh take. In essence, the concept was a game that would feature a roster of characters like what you would find in Pokemon. And the gameplay would be hatching eggs and breeding your creatures, all of which are functional NFTs you can profit from. And all of these NFTs would be handmade art, no randomly generated creatures here. It's quick to make a digital asset with unique randomly generated characteristics. We handmade art for the past six months, bro. Approval, very specific notes, 10 different artists making art for our project. And even in the eight minute announcement, there are some red flags that are immediately apparent, such as the fact that Logan presents himself as being more knowledgeable of NFTs and crypto than most other developers in that space. Provides a yield with a token, can earn you money. And uh, as a person who understands, I think the NFT space enough to know what works, what people want and what they're looking for, I think my game's gonna make uh, make some waves. And twice, he says something kind of wild and then slowly walks it back. Like mentioning that this game is super addictive to kids. Kids are addicted to it. Our developers' kids, all of them, cannot stop playing the game. And it's interesting because we've definitely created like a viral, fun, interactive game for, for, for kids. But, but we're not targeting kids, of course. No, 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 we're merely aiming it at young people. We just happen to test it with kids for some reason. But obviously the crypto space is not for kids. No. Uh, and then also I think the coolest thing about our project is I really, really do believe it is gonna be the catalyst for a lot of young people getting into crypto. I think this will be their first fun NFT crypto experience. Wow, you're going for the 18 to 25 demographic, which tends to be the most financially illiterate? Yeah, that's so much better. And Logan also presents this game as a sound investment, but let's slip that he told his employee that he could wind up making nothing from it. I texted her this, I was like, I was like, look, I'm gonna make you project manager. Uh, I'm gonna give you some equity. Wow. You might make a lot of money. You might make no money at all, but like, it's gonna be fun. Also, Logan uses a lot of jargon, which to me comes across as an attempt to look smarter. Where Logan is relying on the classic idea that if you can't follow what someone is saying, you might assume that they're smarter than you, so they must have arrived at the right conclusion. It's because you're dealing with black blockchain, people's money, uh, transactions, and uh, it's going to be on the Binance Smart Chain, Just I'm, I'm saying this here now, because uh, the Ethereum network, the gas fees don't make sense for the type of uh, continuous and frequent tra transactions taking place in our game. He also kind of admits that this is just a ripoff of Pokemon, which, interesting choice. Because what I'm hearing is someone who loved NFTs and loved the game of Pokemon has come up with a game. You know what I'm saying? And then I wanted to do it with Pokemon. Looked into getting the uh, the licensing uh, for that. Impossible. Good luck. Impossible. <laughs> Good luck. So I was like, you know what? I got something even better and more viral. But okay, taking off my media literacy hat, there really isn't much else that stands out about the video. So what went wrong? 
Well, for the last year, CoffeeZilla has been a major thorn in Logan's side, as he launched an investigation into CryptoZoo where CoffeeZilla uncovered that despite Logan and his team collecting millions of dollars in investments from everyday people, no functional product was ever delivered. Today, we're investigating Logan Paul's CryptoZoo, a blockchain game that made millions but never worked. There was no way to claim your yield. There never was. Hold on. The core mechanic of CryptoZoo, that you can make money with these stupid animals, didn't even work on launch day. And still, to this day, a year later, still does not work. Only it turns out for the people who spent ETH, not only did the yield part of it not work, did the NFTs not pay you, you also couldn't even hatch them. Also, the handmade art that Logan was bragging about as a selling point of this game was actually just a bunch of stock images slightly tweaked. And come to find out this handmade art story wasn't really true. It was actually Adobe stock photos mashed together. And once things fell apart, Logan seemed to abandon the project and move right on to his next money-making idea. I'll tell you about this project when uh, we get closer to launch. Yeah, yeah. This project line is going to be- Is that the thing with the egg? The, like the zoom? No, no, no. no, no. Back. Okay, this one, this one's This dead. one's gonna be, yeah, yeah. This is gonna be, this is gonna be crazy done. Simply put, despite collecting people's money, CryptoZoo never launched in a functional state, and it didn't seem to bother Logan, who went completely silent on the project. Now, real quick, there are two patterns of Logans that I need to point out because you're going to see them a lot. The first is that he will never take true responsibility for his actions. He will always rely on language that either chalks up any harm done to bad luck or bad faith actors. Yo, you all know this, I have the worst luck with some of my best pets. Mm -hmm. Is she getting any better or is she just still a bad dog? She's not gonna be good in the structure that you have her at home, that's all. She's not a bad dog. You're gonna be a good dog soon. I can't wait to see what else goes wrong with this dog. Bad things happen at one time. I don't know what it is, if it's like a universal, like, you to me or what it is but like coyotes are so slick i can't help but feel like this was premeditated like this is the most cunning abduction plan i've seen in my days why me hey, actually maverick was murdered life has been a, a lately to me or the only people speaking out against him are just haters so they don't count and it's all just a conspiracy but like social media loves to do what they want and the armchair quarterbacks trying to make assumptions about about uh, uh, who I am and how I treat animals. Also, Logan usually does do the right thing eventually, except for some reason that only ever happens after he's put into a corner and can't just bury it. Basically, he's only doing the right thing if critical eyes are on him. For my fans who are defending my actions, please don't. They do not deserve to be defended. And so I'm pledging to donate $1 million to various suicide prevention organizations. And quite often, after Logan's so-called sincere gestures cause heat to die down, he just goes right back to calling himself a victim. Because as you guys know, YouTube cut my AdSense in half. Thanks YouTube, love ya. In fact, it is very difficult to find an example of Logan doing the right thing on his first and only try. Though to be fair with CryptoZoo, there actually is some credibility to the idea that Logan may have been somewhat taken advantage of by a friend who was involved in the project. Because Eddie didn't just use made up stories to get in with the CryptoZoo team, he also used his other connections, his real millionaire and billionaire friends that he's managed to gain with all these fake stories and some of them vouched for him. Except CoffeeZilla uncovered DMs that demonstrated that the individuals who possibly deceived Logan were actually his co-conspirators in stealth launching the crypto coin. The plan was to let these insiders, including Logan, buy up the coin before anyone else knew about it in order for Logan's announcement to cause the price to skyrocket, at which point these insiders would all simultaneously sell. And even the day before, Crypto King reminds everyone, Quote, Zoo Day is tomorrow. I highly recommend everyone get a few hundred to a few thousand dollars in Zoo when it goes live. It will likely tend to a thousand X. And by the way, th like this is basically conspiracy to manipulate a market. You know, they're literally having insider rules for how to sell. So yeah, Logan Paul got screwed over while trying to screw over his fans. But I also have to say, not everyone from the founders did sell. For example, Jeff, Logan's manager, to my knowledge, never sold. Neither did Logan Paul, which was a huge surprise. Also, none of that explains Logan essentially abandoning the project and ghosting the people who trusted him with their money. In fact, several of those affected by Logan expressed that they would understand if there was a problem, provided they were made aware of it and steps were taken to fix it. So maybe they could. And if you remember Logan's announcement, he touted himself as being particularly knowledgeable about the NFT and crypto space. So how exactly can you be such an expert, but also played for a sucker? And upon this report making the waves it did, Logan initially responded 
responded by puffing out his chest and threatening CoffeeZilla. And lastly, CoffeeZilla, I now know your motives with this. Clout and money, good for you, but also your, your slimiest and I'll see you in court. And also bizarrely implying that the backlash he was facing to his several controversies was actually a Christian conspiracy. And when that didn't work, shocker I know, Logan finally apologized to CoffeeZilla and pledged to refund those hurt by CryptoZoo. CoffeeZilla is not a criminal. I called him, I apologized. I am personally committing a thousand ETH to this, which is about $1.3 million. And lastly, thank you, CoffeeZilla. Um, you have catalyzed this and I am very grateful for your work and your investigation. So he does the right thing only after being exposed to millions and millions of people and initially trying to use his mass wealth to silence and slander the one person trying to hold him accountable. So as they say, a win is a win, right? Yeah, except they also say that actions speak louder than words. See, the refund was promised with a lot of caveats that basically meant if you weren't part of a very specific group of people, you wouldn't be eligible and it was kind of your problem. The scam was much bigger than $1.3 million. So the fact is most victims are not going to be made whole by this plan. It doesn't even apply to the holder of zoo coins at all. You get nothing if you bought this in-game currency. This refund only applies to current egg holders. I mean, that's where most of the money was spent. It wasn't just on the NFTs. It was on this in-game currency, which Logan seems to have no intention of refunding. In other words, it appeared that Logan was chasing the headline of making things right while trying to minimize the damage to his wallet as much as possible. And after this grand gesture, Logan went radio silent on the refund and dodged CoffeeZilla's attempts to clarify when it could be expected. In fact, it took multiple callouts before Logan finally broke his silence. For example, some ordinary gamers brought a ton of attention to this on December 3rd. 31st, and Logan just so happened to have a response on January 4th after a year of silence. Yeah, some coincidence, I know. But even more, Logan only gave the victims a month to claim their refund and added the major caveat that doing so would waive the victim's right to sue him. Because yeah, for many people, a refund doesn't do much to fix the damage that can come from having thousands and thousands of dollars missing for years. I lost around $50,000 in cryptos. I lost $40,000. I lost around 15,000 US dollars. I lost $25,000. $120,000. $500,000 $500,000 Australian. But already you can see that there's a lot of mishandling from Logan throughout this project, and that's without going into the weeds of it as much as CoffeeZilla did. Because I said that Logan has an ongoing history of scamming his viewers. What did I mean? Well, CryptoZoo wasn't exactly Logan's first foray into the crypto space, nor has it been his last. There was also the cryptocurrency, Dink doink. See, it's somewhat common for a crypto coin to be given an ironic and unserious name in order to make it seem harmless. It also gives the scammers the defense of, it was obviously meant to be ironic, so why would you invest? Kind of like Aiden Ross's aforementioned MILF token or Dogecoin. And in the case of Dink doink, this was taken even further. The token was given an unserious mascot, and there was even a music video made in the style of South Park. Yes, I'm very serious. I want you to dink on my face, take a dunk on my chest, yeah, yeah. And Logan's role here was that he promoted the coin to his fans while presenting it as an exciting opportunity he learned about and is getting involved in for fun. This is a coin I believe in. It's my favorite one, to be honest. Dink Doink is so much more than a meme coin. And I, as a holder in Dink Doink, I believe in this I think it's gonna go crazy. When in reality, Logan is one of the main people behind its inception and designed the mascot. I was chilling with Logan and, and we were like, what's the stupidest name we could think of? We were like, Dink Doink. Oh my God, his name's Dink Doink. <laughs> and it just came alive. Like Logan designed the character on his phone, on Snapchat. So you design it and then you go, wow, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. It's your thing. Which is incredibly similar to the shady crypto stream of iShow Speed, where he asked his viewers to visit a website because he was interested and wanted to see what it was about. Oh, and Speed just so happened to have the founders in the room to show crypto and NFTs to Speed's viewers. To say that this practice is kind of shady would be majorly underselling it. Because if I did this kind of thing with say a sponsorship, that would be illegal. I could get in a lot of trouble if I didn't make it abundantly clear that that my motivation behind promoting a product is at least partially for profit. There was also Liquid Marketplace, co-founded by Logan, which is basically timeshares, but for collectibles. Like you can't afford that thousand dollar Charizard card, so how about a tenth of it? Yeah, I think it's obvious why no one's ever done that before. It's a dumb idea. So instead of me being the only person in the world who owns this card, we as a collective can own it together. So I'll be retaining 49% of the card and allowing 51% of it to be bought by the users on Liquid Marketplace. And much like with CryptoZoo, once the 
initial hype died down, Logan just quietly abandoned the project. You also had Elongate, another coin that Logan promoted and then sold just a few days later. So good. Elongate made me rich. Elongate, baby, let's go. Elongate token. <laughs> he also shouted out another meme token, F Elon, in a now deleted tweet. And in case you're looking for what all of these have in common, it's that Logan will create hype for a crypto coin and similar product, only to peace out once that interest raises the price enough for Logan to sell. But okay, enough crypto talk, because I want to talk about the troubling story behind the two ventures that made Logan his fortune, his merch line and his billion dollar sports drink Prime. Because yeah, there's a lot to say. Now when Logan and Jake Paul were primarily vloggers, there were multiple signatures to their brands. From their savage lifestyle to YouTuber diss tracks, they kept busy, but perhaps most notably was their merch. And no, I'm not referring to how on multiple occasions Logan made merch out of his pets either before or after they suffered excruciating deaths due to his negligence. I already talked about that last year. No, instead, I want to talk about how Logan would promote it. Because I want to remind you of one of his stated goals with CryptoZoo. It was a project specifically targeted at young people. And while of course he would never make a crypto project for children, it just so happens that the product appeals to them strongly. To the point of Logan calling it an addiction. Kids are addicted to it. Our developers, kids, all of them cannot stop playing the game. See, Logan's fans are on the young side, including a lot of kids. And of course, when media is accessible to children, ethically, things get really complicated really quickly. Just ask YouTube after a series of inappropriate videos featuring children's characters went viral on their platform. Absolutely stupid content that use family-friendly characters and uh, put them in some of the most insane looking scenarios, some of the most unfamily friendly situations too. It was content designed to keep kids engaged at the cost of their brain cells. But Logan's merch. Him and Jake infamously pushed their merch a lot. Now when I say that, you might think, oh, every video he gave a quick shout out or two, right? No, no, it was constant. While merch is usually supplemental to the income a YouTuber might receive from their videos and sponsorships, for Logan and Jake, it would not be a stretch to say that their vlogs were mostly just means of promoting their merch. This included constant plugs during their vlogs. I can't trust that Santa's gonna get it to you, so make sure you get it at loganpaul.com slash shop for the The hottest, softest merch in the game. I know my boy, he gonna go out, he gonna dent the universe, I see you. Definitely not a Lambo. It's, but it's better than a Lambo. loganpaul.com slash shop like like, why would you get a Lambo when you could just get merch? Yo! You got the pink hoodie? That sold out like hot cakes! What are you doing? Oh no. I mean, it's the hottest merch in the game. It's still gonna be hot, even in the cold. Our mom is a stripper. <laughs> but I'm repping the merch. Hey, yes, she repped that merch. Ooh, yes, yeah, she repped that merch. Ooh, don't yeah, go on the comms, I shot. Hey. Oh. Hey, who's that Santa looking at? Take your gifts and give them back. Maverick merch is where it's at. Got the hoodie, got the hat. Hey, who's that Santa looking at? Take your gifts and give them back. Logan also made several viral songs that were just commercials in disguise. Bro, why would he not deliver Maverick merch this year? It's the hottest merch in the game. I don't know, bro, because he's Santa. <laughs> Christmas from the corner, get your merch, link in bio. Yeah. Logan, Paul, you use your song to plug your merch. Yeah, boy, I'm the Maverick. Why, you feeling hurt? Uh, yeah, I wrote that merch, boom. Yeah, I wrote that merch, boom. Yes, I do my church. Take your gifts and give them back. Maverick merch is where it's at. Got the hoodie, got the hat. Remember when I said that it's unethical to not be upfront with adults when you're promoting stuff to them for gain? Yeah, meanwhile, Logan is out here making songs, saying he's better than Santa just to brainwash kids into buying his merch. That's just great. And Logan also bragged about his merch store within seconds of learning that his pet parrot slash mascot was eaten. Yes, I am serious. The pet, the pet that I've had for the longest time in my life, seven years, at Maverick Parrot on Instagram, 1.3 million followers, 2.3 on the brand account. Dead? Now, am I saying that you can't sell merchandise aimed at children? Obviously not. But I will say that in this case, I do find it very weird. Because influencers, unlike traditional celebrities, often form a parasocial bond with their viewers. Where such a personal and one-sided connection is formed, it can make creators like Logan almost feel like a friend. Now at times, sure, it can be a reach. But someone who each and every day is taking you along for their life, letting you meet their pets, their friends, have some inside jokes maybe? From the perspective of a kid, you can see how Logan playing the cool older brother can be very alluring. Hell, it's a role that Logan would actively play into. I saw this video saying, Logan, you're my hero. Saying I'm the man like I'm some type of Robert De Niro. I'm somebody's hero? Wow, that's amazing. Everyone has a hero. True. Zero people shouldn't have a hero. Yeah, yeah. Logan is my hero. He is really nice. And here, dude, take some Maverick merchandise. Lincoln Bio. Everybody needs someone to idolize. It's true, Logan. You're really wise. Also really true. 
So yes, I do think that in any context, making a child think that you're friends so that they can give you money and clamoring for that dough as strongly as Logan is weird. And this would even extend to Logan emotionally preying on his fans regularly. For example, he would tell them that buying his merch would improve their mental health. If you find yourself confused, sad, lonely, and just downright unhappy, it's probably because you're not in the low gang. So subscribe and all that can say, just subscribe to the Join the strongest family on YouTube. Got yourself some lab rewards, the hottest, softest mission they can. And go out and be different, guys. The math revolution is real. Yeah, in case you missed that, that was Logan quite literally telling children that buying his merch would cure their depression really think about the kind of person that says something like that. But I want to talk about a specific instance of him doing this, one that is so gross and despicable that I still struggle to believe that he fully got away with it. See, in 2018, Logan Paul found himself at the center of perhaps the single greatest scandal in creator history, one that would help fundamentally change how every YouTuber would do business going forward and even YouTube itself. Of course, I'm referring to the Japan incident. To make a long story short, Logan made a series of vlogs in Japan where he was criticized for bothering the locals, as his behavior, we'll say, didn't align with the culture there. I just gotta be careful to not like disrespect the culture. Japan is all about the respect. And this came to a climax when Logan decided to vlog himself exploring a forest famous for being where many Japanese citizens would go to end their lives. And the video was not a somber one in tone, it was clearly being played for shock value and entertainment. Now with that said, buckle the f up, because you're never going to see a video like this again. The Sea of Trees, also known as the Japanese Suicide Forest. I don't have to be in this part. This is not a f***ing joke. You can't say that at a suicide forest. And when Logan actually did find a body, he proceeded to walk right up to it and show it in graphic detail. This is very, dude, his hands are purple. Right. He did this this morning. Now, Logan faced a wave of backlash unlike anything we had ever seen before, with even mainstream media figures calling him out. So, true to his nature, Logan once again rushed to do the right thing until people stopped watching. See, the main consequence that Logan faced was his AdSense getting cut in half, meaning he he would only earn half as much from the ads on his videos. Which might sound harsh, but half of millions of dollars is still millions of dollars. It's the same kind of slap on the wrist that YouTube is known for giving their top earners. So yeah, Logan got off easy and of course went on a very expensive media tour. I am a good guy who made a bad decision. Making a documentary to increase awareness. And although this is a tough conversation, it's important because things can and will get better. Pledging a million dollars to the cause. As you guys know, I've pledged to donate a million dollars to suicide prevention organizations. I'm sort of immersing myself in this world. And releasing an apology that provides no defense for his actions. For my fans who are defending my actions, please don't. They do not deserve to be defended. Which is incredible, right? Yeah, it was until everyone moved on. I mean, I can mention how Logan started his next video by bragging about gaining a million subscribers from the controversy. What other YouTuber you know can take a three week break and still gain a million subscribers? But let's stay focused on his merch. Logan went on to play the victim, suddenly doing a full 180 and saying that YouTube's punishment was too harsh. Because as you guys know, YouTube cut my AdSense in half. Thanks YouTube, love ya. Furthermore, Logan explained how all of this criticism was unwarranted, but people just seemed to hate him no matter what. And the haters are stronger than ever, guys. Low gang, there's tough. There's a petition to get me removed from YouTube. No matter how much hate or comments from random strangers who I have never even seen or heard of in my life. Logan, you're trash. Logan, you're garbage. You're rotten hell, die. You hang yourself. Like, all this, it's, it's noise to me. The media can twist things so easily. So internet, please, yo, use me, bro. Crucify me, vilify me. And while setting the stage for how much of a victim he is, we are being threatened to be sued for $4 million. It's a lot of money, a lot of money. Logan also immediately begins promoting his merch and even acknowledges that it's ridiculous. A new haircut, new merch, baby! Really though, we've been dropping fire, bro. This is a sexy outfit. Even if it's soaking wet, who cares? And I know what you're thinking. Logan, are you really starting your first vlog back? with a merch plug, okay. And then Logan Paul, a multi-millionaire, proceeded to tell children that they needed to buy his merch or else he would lose his house. Yes, I am, because as you guys know, YouTube cut my AdSense in half. Thanks, YouTube, love ya. So 
So I am gonna need you guys to buy all my merch, uh, Maverick merch, of course, so I don't lose my house. Now, while an adult probably sees that and rolls their eyes, try to get into the headspace of a child. A child who just saw their hero rake through the coals by the entire world. A child whose hero is at an all-time low. Of course they're gonna want to help their hero in any way they can. But now, just watching Logan's videos isn't enough because YouTube is bullying him. So these kids are being told that the only way to save their hero is to get their hands on a credit card and buy Logan's merch. Now, is this a scam in the same way as his crypto ventures? Maybe not. But I said from the start that Logan's behavior doesn't stop at outright scams, but also has a fair bit of classic exploitation sprinkled throughout. And you might say that most children aren't quite as gullible as I'm presenting. And even if we say that's true, are you really going to say that out of the millions of children, some of whom grew up watching this man, none were that gullible? I don't know about you, but if Steve from Blue's Clues was asking me for some money, I'd be giving Steve from Blue's Clues some dang money. Also, it's kind of insane that Logan took so much of a financial hit in order to gain forgiveness, yet was so quick to use that exact sacrifice as a tool to guilt his viewers into supporting him. It's not a sacrifice if you already have a plan on how to profit from it. Just saying. Though either way, Logan had a brilliant business model, one where he gets these kids to watch his content, fund his PR campaigns, act as his defenders online, and even act as free marketing. All Logan has to do is ensure that his vlogs are so crazy that these kids just have to go tell their friends at school tomorrow. And when Logan crosses the line and traumatizes these kids, he can just ask them to give him money to fix his mistake. And if that doesn't do it, Logan can also just sell them poison. Well, that might be a reach, but somehow I don't think it's a big one let's talk about Prime. See, Prime is absolutely blown up in the last few years. I'm talking black markets in schools, scalpers, and a multi-millionaire dancing around as a Prime bottle mascot on the WWE stage. See, Prime Hydration is a sports drink company with Logan Paul and fellow YouTuber KSI acting as the face. And it truly is an amazing story. These two creators break out into the scene and somehow compete with the big boys like Gatorade and Powerade almost overnight. In fact, Prime Hydration put those companies to shame. Like, from day one, Prime was boasting that it has more electrolytes than any of its competitors, less sugar, and yet a better taste. Which is insane! Like, pretend you're a YouTuber starting a company from scratch. How do you possibly come out of nowhere and manage to take companies with unfathomable amounts of money and decades of experience and put them all to shame? Oh, that's easy. You lie. Or, well, play very loosely with the truth. What do I mean? Well, Prime's main selling point is completely true. It does have more electrolytes than its main competitor, Gatorade. And the stats are insane. Just to hear it from Logan himself. The Gatorade has 36 grams of sugar in it as opposed to Prime's two grams. That is a lot of sugar compared to not a lot of sugar. Gatorade has 140 calories. Look at that. And Prime only has 25. We're both electrolyte drinks. Gatorade has 350 milligrams of electrolytes and a bigger bottle, yet Prime doubles it with 825 milligrams of electrolytes. On Honestly, there's no comparison. But what is an electrolyte? Well, I'm no nutritionist, but in a nutshell, they are various minerals that help your body with various functions, such as maintaining hydration and muscle function. So for sports drinks, their primary purpose is to provide you with the electrolytes you need in order to safely exercise and work out. And weirdly, most of these sports drinks, if you think about it, they taste kind of salty, right? Like, especially when you grab sugar-free options, there's this little tinge of saltiness. Yet miraculously, Prime manages to taste sweeter with just a fraction of the sugar. So either these two YouTubers were able to help start a company that cracked a code no one else could, or there is some incredibly deceptive marketing at play here. Any guesses which one it is? Yeah, to no one's surprise, Logan Paul puts being a salesman first. Truth teller? Eh, it's a bit lower on the list. See, the reason that nearly every sports drink tastes a bit salty is because they contain large amounts of, well, sodium, salt. Because when you start sweating, you lose salt at a faster rate than any other electrolyte. So most sports drinks aim to contain electrolytes that are relatively proportionate to what you'll lose while sweating. That's kind of why saline, when you're in the hospital, it's basically water with just the right amount of salt. Salt, in proper doses, is integral to staying hydrated, but adding sodium to something, of course, makes it taste salty. So how did Logan and KSI put more salt in their drink than their competitors while using less sugar, yet end up with a sweeter product? Oh, that's easy. 
they didn't. See, when Logan and KSI brag about having more electrolytes than any other electrolyte drink, it's because their drinks are mostly potassium. Now, of course, potassium is important, but when you're trying to stay hydrated while sweating, it's not nearly as important as sodium because you lose much less potassium via sweat. But it is a lot easier to add potassium to something without affecting taste. I mean, most people find bananas delicious, right? But then when you oversalt something, it becomes inedible. So Prime is basically just potassium and artificial sweeteners disguised as a health drink. They are relying on the average Joe remaining ignorant in favor of a good sales pitch, just like with Logan's crypto schemes. And to give you an idea of how ridiculous this language is, let me show you a clip of someone with far less charisma than Logan making similar kinds of claims. You said grapes are sugar bombs that are they problematic. They are sugar bombs. There's as but much that sugar mean that... in a cup of grapes as in a Hershey's candy bar. Yeah, but that requires nuance. It's a child hears, a mother hears, grapes are a sugar bomb, might as well give them Hershey's. They will give them Hershey's. <laughs> Might as well. Logan is basically using the same logic. And as for why this matters, low sodium while working out can lead to muscle cramping, weakness, and fatigue. When you're holding 130 pounds over your head, any of those things can quickly result in injury. And if you're going to say that somehow that's not Logan's problem, so much of his marketing is literally him sweating in the middle of an intense workout while shilling how much Prime helps him with these sessions. He is presenting it as something that can boost performance despite possibly hindering it. If you want to learn more, Food Theory did a really good video on this. It's in the description with the CoffeeZilla series. Though as far as Prime goes, the fraudulent behavior doesn't end at what's in their drink, but also extends to how they promote it. See, Prime recently held a huge competition, one where a solid gold Prime bottle was placed in both New York City and London simultaneously, and the public would be able to visit either location and try to guess which passcode would unlock the box holding it. However, both of the containers were designed to melt the bottle in either of two scenarios, either if the time limit ends without anyone guessing the code, or the other location has a winner. So if someone won the New York bottle, the London one would be melted or vice versa. And there was a winner, specifically in London. Now that on its own isn't too suspicious, but how it went down is. Simply put, the ending of this competition couldn't possibly have been scripted any better because with seconds left on the clock, it was won by a young child. I mean, it was a child who seemed too young to even compete according to the contest terms of service, but whatever. And let's face it, that is an amazing snippet for a viral ad. I mean, you had a real risk of some random adult who isn't good on camera winning the money at some random point where neither Logan or KSI would be present for the photo op. I mean, drinking all that prime must mean they're spending a lot of time in the bathroom. Yet this young boy won life-changing money seconds before it would go up in flames with KSI ready and, well, primed to get that photo op. But what if I told you that Food Theory actually calculated that the the odds of anyone winning this contest at all was between 0.25 and roughly 1.7%. The condition set should have virtually guaranteed that there was no winner at all. Literally, the odds of winning that golden prime bottle were, in fact, one in a million. However, the odds that someone would guess the right code actually increased as the competition went on. As each person went up and inevitably guessed the wrong number, that number was then removed from the list of possible guesses at that location moving forward. At max, Logan and KSI were expecting 8,640 people to play at each individual location. That means that the odds of someone winning the Golden Prime bottle was 8,640 divided by a million. 0.86% chance. If we lump together the odds of winning at both the UK and the US locations, well then the odds obviously double to a still measly 1.728%. And even those slim chances aren't really reflective of reality. Not only would there be some sort of delay between people's attempts, but according to some TikToks of people who tried the game out for themselves, it seemed the clock was a bit more generous than just the 20 second marker, meaning even fewer players inputting codes, less chances that someone is gonna win this thing, probably closer to a quarter of a percent that anyone would walk away with the golden bottle. So the odds of a young kid winning at the buzzer, it is very difficult to believe nothing suspicious happened here, especially considering the reputation of the ones behind this contest. Food Theory also pointed out that the marketing behind this contest was, well, a lie. The contest rules stated that if no one won at either location, the host would be able to pick a winner through alternative means. And while legally I can't say this was definitely rigged, given the level of coincidence at play, juxtaposed with Logan's history of deception, you tell me how that sounds. And with that said, if something nefarious did happen, it's hard to know if this was always the plan or if this was a contingency that they put in place as a last resort. But either way, I would argue that this is still a classic Logan scam, only instead of stealing people's money, he simply opted for their time. And while this is less extreme than the other examples of Logan's deception, I still think 
think this matters, as it encapsulates Logan's character to a T. Because like him or not, Logan Paul is an amazing salesman, arguably a genius in that regard. And the fact that he doesn't appear concerned with integrity or shame just gives him so much more potential. The fact that something like this seems so minor because of his track record is kind of the whole problem here. And that's why it's fitting to me that Logan will likely be the first billionaire YouTuber. He has the perfect mentality of exploiting anyone he can gain value from. And no matter what Prime goes on to do, that will always be its foundation, and it's a rotten one at best. But on the topic of Prime, I also want to quickly talk about KSI, more specifically his friendship with Logan. You see, in response to Logan's announcement that refunds for CryptoZoo would be starting, KSI and other creators that rely on Logan immediately took to saying that this shows Logan is great and everyone criticizing him is just a hater. Of course, completely ignoring all of the issues with this refund that I already talked about, which makes sense. There are billions of dollars on the line here in their joint venture, so of course KSI is going to sweat when Logan finds himself in trouble. Which, uh, partnerships in the creator space is already kind of risky. I mean, you're tying your business, at least partially, to someone else's character. Which is why, unless the duo are like childhood friends, partnerships tend not to go too well. But you know, friendship is fun, so maybe take that risk. But this kind of shows how interesting it is for two creators known for being controversial to enter a joint venture where their main source of income is now largely based on the other's ability to keep their nose clean. Like, of all people to take that risk with. Really? Logan Paul? Though most absurdly, KSI pointed out that Logan finally launched a successful NFT project after like five tries, and uses that to insinuate that Logan's past deeds don't count. Which thank god JJ isn't a lawyer because that defense would sure be interesting in court. Your honor, my client may have robbed that bank, but he did go back the very next day and complete a proper deposit with the ATM. Now was that transaction funded by the robbery? Maybe so but it definitely shows he's on the right path, so how about we got him some slack, right? And then once called out, KSI fell back to the classic, oh, I don't know what I'm talking about, so leave me alone. Which begs the question of, if you don't know what you're talking about, why say anything at all? Anyway, I just wanted to point out that while Logan is terrible across the board, KSI is fine with enabling that now that he has a financial incentive to do so. What's that they say? Life imitates art? No! <laughs> no! Why am I always sucking you, bro? <laughs> <laughs> now basically, I am pointing out the exact same thing I did a year ago. Logan Paul only cares about Logan Paul. He will exploit children, viewers, animals, anyone in order to come out on top. And I think what sucks the most about this is that Logan doesn't need to do this. He already has enough to be set for life. But rather than take a page out of, say, MatPat's book and use his wealth to retire and enjoy the privilege of only having to work for passion, Logan just seems fixated on dying with as much in his bank account as possible. Though on the bright side, unlike most creators, Logan Paul has a great fallback option if the whole content creator thing doesn't work out. If nothing else, Logan would be great as one of those people that spend their days calling the elderly and scamming them out of some Google Play cards. I mean, you gotta admit, it is perfectly on brand for him, right? He already knows how to scam kids, but he's leaving a whole market of gullible people untapped. Or he could become a funeral home director and exploit the grieving and vulnerable. I mean, screw plan B, Logan should just start doing all this right now. By the way, given Logan Paul's innovative and entrepreneurial spirit, I can't wait to see who he scams next, what he does next. Bye!